Hey y'all, welcome back. Today we're going over how to solve multiplication and division equations using the inverse operations, meaning we're solving for the variable. Let's go. For our first equation, I have 2x equals 10. Now, because the 2 and the x are right next to each other, that means we're multiplying. Now, what is the opposite, the inverse operation of multiplication? Well, the inverse, the opposite, is division. So, we're going to divide both sides by 2, by that number. Now, 2 divided by 2, that equals 1, in which case, for multiplication, that cancels out. Now, we have 10 divided by 2. How many times does 2 fit inside 10? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. We have 5, so that means x, I get to get all by itself, equals that 5. Now, we can double check this by plugging that 5 back in, because it's saying if x equals 5, this should equal 10. Now, does 2 times 5 equal 10? Yes. Yes. Both of those have to be equal on both sides in order for it to be equal, meaning it is correct. Let's do another one. This equation, we have 24 equals 4g. Now, the order of it doesn't matter, but I do have to get the variable by itself. So, if I need to get g by itself, that means I need to do the opposite. 4 and g, they're right next to each other, which means multiplication. The inverse operation of multiplication, the opposite, is division. So I need to divide both sides by the number that's attached to the variable. So in this case, it's 4. Now, 4 divided by 4 equals 1, which would be nothing with multiplication because a 1 would just be the letter and would be the answer itself. So these cancel out. Long story short, these cancel each other out. When you see this fraction line, all this means is division. And in fact, from this lesson on, this is how you're going to see division. So how many times does 4 go into 24? That goes in six times, and I have g all by itself. So six equals g. g equals six. If you would like to double check, as you should, you should plug it in. So we would have four times six equals 24. These two have to be the same in order for it to be true, in order for it to actually equal. So six times four, that is 24, and that does equal the same as that side. So we are good to go. Now let's go ahead and do a division problem. So for our first division problem, there's a couple things I wanna show you. One, like I already mentioned, this, this fraction means division. And that is how you're going to see most division problems from here on out. So know when you see a fraction, that means division. Next, when you're doing a word problem and it's asking you for a division equation, the numerator is going to be the unknown number, the variable. So the unknown number will always be the numerator at the top. So, like I said, this is a division problem. The inverse operation of division is going to be multiplication. So in order to do that, we're gonna multiply both sides by this denominator. So the denominator is six, that means I'm going to multiply this by six. What you do to one side of the equal sign, you must do to the other. Now, these get to cancel each other out, leaving m by itself. And now I just have to solve 10 times six. So 10 times six equals 60. I got the m by itself, so m, equals 60. There you go. Okay, so we have another division equation. I have 4.7 equals g over 3.2. Fraction means division, so the inverse operation of this would be multiplication. So I'm going to multiply the denominator to both sides. So 3.2, I'm going to multiply 3.2, 3.2. These get to cross out. g is by itself. And now I multiply these. Now, because it's multiplication, the decimals don't need to line up because I'm going to count them afterwards. In this case, they do line up. Seven times two, I have 14. Two times four, eight plus one gives me nine. Cross it, drop it, add a zero, switch. Three times seven, 21, that's 32. Four times three is 12, 13, 14. Add them all up, four, 10, five, one. Now I have two decimal spaces, so I get to jump to decimal spaces, giving us 15.04. So g equals 15.04 that is our answer okay so if you do see a division equation with the old school division symbol and you need to find the variable i wanted to show you how to solve that real quick so you are going to switch the variable with the number that's on the other side of the equal sign you can switch them as long as you also switch this division sign to multiplication so let's switch it up. We have W equals 17 times six. 
that's all you're doing. Now, 17 times six, I'm gonna make it vertical. That way I could do it easier in my brain. Now, seven times six is 42. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Now, W equals 102. All right, one word problem for good measure. Caroline baked three dozen oatmeal raisin cookies for a bake sale at school. This is one fourth of the number of dozens of cookies she baked in all. How many dozens of cookies did she bake? So let's break that down. I know. So we're using cubes, which means I need to circle, or in this case, write my important information. So Caroline baked three dozen oatmeal raisin cookies. Three dozen. I know this is one fourth the number of dozens of cookies that she baked in all. So she baked three dozen cookies for the bake sale. She originally made way more than that. This is only one fourth of what she actually made. So we're trying to find the total of how much she actually made. So I'm gonna put C for cookies. This is the total amount of cookies she made. This is only the fourth amount of her three dozen. So three dozen is the total. The variable always goes on top. So we have the total amount of cookies that she made overall. Because this is only a fourth, we are keeping this denominator. And the total that she turned in is our dozen there. So now from here, we're going to solve in order to find this out. So we, because we need to get the variable by itself, I need to do the opposite inverse operation. This is division, so meaning I'm going to do multiplication times in both sides by four. Now, these cancel out. These ones equal three times four equals 12. But remember, it is a dozen. And that leaves me with C by myself. So C equals 12 dozen cookies. So one fourth of 12 dozen is three. Whew. Thank you guys for watching the video on solving multiplication and divisions equations with inverse operation, meaning we're solving for the variable. If you found this helpful, please give this video a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one. Bye guys.